Okay, so getting back into the um, uh, earthquake forecasting system, the, the advanced seismic warning system. Um, so basically, you know, in, in block diagram format, you, so you'd have a, a, an antenna array. You have then, a, a split antenna array uh, consisting of a pair of antennas, one's called the beverage antenna, which receives the electromagnetic and electrostatic impulses from the space outside of the physical mass of the Earth. Okay. And then you have an Alexanderson antenna, which does not respond to electrical signals or fields external to the Earth, but only the ones on the interior. That way, then you can separate what's being generated by the aurora or what's being generated by lightning from what's being generated from the interior of the Earth. And this goes through a very sophisticated amplifier system, which took many years to develop where the entire composite of the low band spectrum all the way up into the AM band all flows through the amplifiers simultaneously without any intermodulation or distortion to get the proper uh, waveforms without any ringing or shifting. Uh, you, your equipment has to be clean so that it doesn't modify the waveform so that these transient impulses come through pure and undistorted. Extremely difficult. And then there is a heterodyning, uh, wide band heterodyning system this whole thing took 10 years to build, where you could get into the frequencies that you couldn't hear through a heterodyning process, and then, then analyze them on an acoustical level, where they're up in the high frequency, only the dogs here, they can bring them down into where you can hear, and then you can, you can start to hear the dynamics of this electrical process that builds before an earthquake start at the frequency ranges of its origin uh, occur even longer before the earthquake. So there's a whole like week-long process mm -hmm. that possibly is uh, developing here. Unfortunately, upon completion of this whole system, it was taken away from me. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the system obviously is not theoretical. You've done it. You know how to do it, and you're in the process of uh, getting everything together. And as a matter of fact, the uh, you already have governmental approval uh, to do this system on government land again. Right. And so, um, this time being that it's on government land, there's not going to be any real estate complication. Right. But the complication is, is I'm required to provide a substantial bond, which is way beyond my financial resources. So this is going to have to be a public funding situation. Otherwise, the rest of it is pretty much covered. So we're going to be um, uh, putting together a new uh, fundraising campaign. Uh, Adam Bull uh, and myself are going to be working on this, and this will actually be on Indiegogo, uh, like the last campaign. And um, so, short short term immediate needs is the ten thousand dollars to be able to raise money for the bond. Yeah. And then um, your estimate is maybe maybe about fifteen thousand dollars worth of equipment. Yeah, because I have to buy. Uh and hope that I can find them. I mm -hmm. have to get a whole new set of chart recorders. Mm -hmm. I have to get the racks to put them in. These equipment racks are, you know, they cost us almost as much as buying a used car. Right. The prices of this stuff is just, uh, and the oscilloscopes I'll have to make from scratch. So that will be about $15,000 right there in materials and effort. Mm -hmm. As far as the, uh, the wires and the cross arms and what have you is we've been provided with enough abandoned telephone facilities which exist on government property uh, that they need taken down or cleaned up. So, so we're in the process of harvesting miles and miles of wire, mm -hmm. uh, uh, truckloads of cross arms and insulators in which to build this thing. And the only basic cost of that is the gasoline and the food and, mm -hmm. you know, and what have you to go out there and do this. Uh, we have uh, video footage of the process beginning mm -hmm. in another one of our experimental locations. And uh, it's, it's all underway. Uh, basically, what, you know, minor uh, donations that I receive through the mail and Social Security, uh, it's possible for me to do all this without any major funding as far as, you know, the wires and the poles mm -hmm. and that end of it. But the uh, problem that you face in this society is these insurances and bonds, and that's something that now has thrown a monkey wrench in the whole situation that I have to overcome. So with the, um, you know, already having the poles and the wires and, and, and uh, that part of the project, uh, as far as, you know, wires, cross arms, insulators, that kind of stuff, uh, 
being able to have access to that is already saving thousands and thousands and thousands well, of dollars. Untold thousands of dollars. Not, uh, not to mention time saved uh, because of the fact that a lot of these poles are already erected. Yeah, we have 54 poles to work with on our installation from a previously existing facility mm -hmm. uh, at 175 foot spacing. That, uh, that's quite a transmission structure. And that alone would would take what months and months or oh, I don't know if I have to go out and dig all those holes myself, yeah, you know, and find the poles and drag them out right. there and put them up uh about uh about five of the poles uh you know are, are disintegrated and need to be replaced, and they're all busted. There's a mm -hmm. couple more dead end poles that'll have to go up uh those are available locally from uh the junk collectors and what have you around mm -hmm. here. It's kind of a junkyard town, so we can get kind of in between stuff the uh the, the municipality itself is supporting our project along with the federal government, which is basically unheard of situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, the uh, it's fantastic the way that all this is coming together. It's it's right. just leaving everybody flabbergasted how, you know, something that would normally be so much red tape and complications and hassles and denials is just is all just flowing like water. This is is a very rare and valuable circumstance. And it's very, you know, rare and valuable technology. I mean, the implications are very profound. And for $25,000 to be able to get another functional earthquake warning system is, I mean, it's, it's priceless. Because the implications are, once that's re rebuilt, that's going to be able to attract more funding where that type of system could be replicated. And essentially, if there's, you know, say three in different areas, you could actually not only detect that an earthquake is coming, but you can pretty much pinpoint where it's going to happen. Exactly. And so, you know, for $25,000 for the potential to save, you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people's lives, you know, over the years is, you know, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Um, and so this Telluric uh, Advanced uh, Seismic Warning System, um, you know, so from, from landers, you have a lot of the uh, chart recorder roles, um, which we looked at yesterday. I don't know if we want to go, go into those, or I can just I think what, splice you know, in some video, yeah, the video and pictures. It's difficult to go through the roles. So, so, so yesterday we went through some of the uh, uh, chart recorder roles, showing the different um, earth activity and so forth, uh, and you can see where it's building up, building up, building up, and suddenly you, you have the earthquake. And, um, you know, this is showing from anywhere from, what, 18 to 48 hours ahead of time that you can see the activity building up? Yeah, the, the chart rolls that I have uh, were not of actually any, there was no major earthquakes in that vicinity during uh -huh. that test period. But there were other earthquakes uh, close by, uh, particularly as we'll see by looking in the charts of one in Mexico that, that did show the electric component. Uh, the, the telluric signals that are associated with the earthquake will not propagate more than about 150 miles. Okay. Which is good because that way then you're not confused by, you know, mm -hmm. something happening off in the distance. Mm -hmm. So you can build a network of stations in a 150 mile sided triangle mm -hmm. then and determine the situation. But the beverage antenna, not the underground antenna, but the overground antenna will pick up the reflections of the the earth becomes so intensely active electrically that the waves refract through the surface of the earth, refract through the ionosphere, and will come back down to distant locations. And this is what's happened with the Japan earthquake. Unfortunately, uh, we lost the station immediately afterwards, and all the records were lost. The story of Eric Dollard's life, but uh, but I can recount what had happened and the. Uh, the County Board of Supervisors uh, was there to see it also, so there must be some record of it somewhere in San Bernardino. They took pictures of, of the deal as the, the overground electrical activity chart went off the scale uh, one hour before the precursor earthquake happened in Japan. Mm -hmm. It maintained a off the scale level. I had the had attenuation in the system to keep it on, on the chart so that I could see the variations up into the big event and then it dissipated. Mm -hmm. Now the one that happened in Mexico, which was closer to the station, uh, did the same thing and that actually is recorded on the station log chart hanging on the wall outside and I can show that. <laughs>
Thank you.